the Gita is there, focus only on Gita. All else is just stories. Gita is not a story. Gita is a philosophical document of the highest order. It is not storytelling. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, actually, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Uh, sir, actually, I have one doubt. In market, there are many number of guitars are available. Bhagavad Gita, sir. Somebody told me that uh, there are 80 varieties of Gita. Even though slokas are same, but the, I have seen uh, the explanation is uh, may not matching, sir. Two, three Gitas I have seen, the explanation is not matching. Uh, since Gita has explained by Lord Krishna some, some thousands of years before, so how can I ensure that uh, whatever available, it is uh, pure only, it is not impure, it is not uh, changed by somebody for their own benefit. Also, I have seen that uh, uh, in some Gita, Karma Yoga is the best yoga they have explained and in some other Gita, Bhakti Yoga is the best yoga they have explained. And in Gita, it is believing in the explanation of the Gita. It is believe, it is saying about the next birth, previous birth is there. But uh, in Ashtanga Gyota, like, that is uh, written by Rushi Ashtabhakra. There it is written that it is not uh, previous birth and uh, next birth is not exist. There are many things, sir. Uh, if I compare from Gita to other scriptures, it is not matching. So, how to know that which is See, first of all, avoid the commentary part. Hmm? It is in the commentary part that the maximum kind of adulteration takes place. That's where uh, the various uh, commentators push their agenda. Try limiting yourself to just the translation of the verses. And go for translations where you know for sure that each word has been individually and correctly translated into your preferred language. Your preferred language could be Hindi, Tamil, English, whatever. Right? There is uh, no need to read detailed uh, commentaries. So that's the first thing. That's where the maximum mischief takes place and that must be avoided. Secondly, remember that... Uh, Gita has to agree with Upanishads. Hmm? The Gita cannot have anything that goes against the basic tenets of Vedant. Right? So if the verses of Gita are being interpreted to mean something that is not at all in sync with the Vedantic philosophy, then that particular interpretation has to be immediately rejected. What has happened is that because of the popularity of Gita, all kinds of distorted ideologies have uh, exploited the Gita to validate their own philosophy. That's why there are so many commentaries on the Gita. You can have a philosophy that is not at all in tune with Vedant, but to gain credibility among the masses, you pick up a Vedantic scripture and you interpret it to show that the Gita is saying the same thing as your guru did. Now your guru was an ignorant chap. What he has said is, is, is not at all Vedant. But then you have picked up the Gita just to further your own agenda. And that has happened a lot. And that is, uh, that is the case 
with some of the most uh, publicized versions of Gita. If you, if you read them carefully, you will clearly see that uh, the interpreters are so full of disrespect towards Krishna that they have deliberately distorted the meaning of the verses. In fact, even where Krishna says uh, buddhi, that's there in the shlok. The shlok contains the word buddhi. The translator has written bhakti. Now, this is uh, culpable disobedience. You are not following what Krishna is saying. You are trying to make Krishna follow your ideology. This ought to be punished actually. But instead of being punished, it has become propagated. That's the power of publicity. Anything can become popular. You just have to distribute millions of Gita copies of your own persuasion and ideology and interpretation. And people will think, people are gullible, and people are lazy. They don't bother to read the original, and they hardly know Sanskrit. People will think what you have given them is the right text and the right meaning. It is not. Few other texts have been subjected to such uh, gross uh, distortion as the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So you have to be very careful. You have to be careful especially of the interpretations that have arisen in the recent past. And if you still have doubts, then you need to go to the Upanishads and know their basic philosophy and then ask, this particular shlok of Gita, how do I interpret it in line with the basic Vedantic philosophy? Even if you do not know the entire philosophy, you can depend on the four Mahavakyas or the, or the, or the most important 10 or 12 or 15 Vedantic verses and take them as cardinal. You say these are axiomatic. And everything else has to be in line with them. Therefore, if I come across an interpretation that uh, contradicts these Vedantic verses, then that interpretation is false. That verse has to be interpreted in some other way. Are you getting it? Hmm? A lot of uh, superstition and a lot of uh, useless beliefs have been drawing their sustenance from false interpretations of the Gita. The Gita, in some sense, has suffered because of its popularity. If you follow some rotten belief, then you have to display that your belief is sanctioned by the Gita. So you pick up some verse of the Gita and slaughter it to show that it suits your belief. Right? So be very careful. When it comes to Vedanta, that Gita is an integral part of. Acharya Shankar is the leading authority. It, uh, it makes sense to begin with his Bhashya. In modern times, Ramakrishna mission has done a good job. The text by Gita Press is also possible. 
Chinmay Mission uh, also brings out uh, pretty accurate translations. The others must be rigorously avoided. And if you are speaking to me, then your foundation has humbly brought out a couple of volumes on the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And currently, I am running a verse by verse course on the Gita and books on it, chapter wise will be published very soon. So that too as a resource is available to you. Uh, I have humbly tried with all my limitations to be as true to the spirit of Sri Krishna and Vedanta as possible. Yeah. So see if it uh, helps you. Uh, sir, shall I ask another question? Yes. Sir, is it next birth or previous birth is exist? I've answered that in detail many a times. Hmm? Uh, so I advise you to go through those articles or videos. They are freely available hmm? on Punarjan, Reincarnation, Karma Phal. So I have spoken dozens of times, right? So please go through them. And if you still can't be clear, then I'll be there to answer. Uh, 